Okay, we're on page Zion Amad Aleph, 87a, about the middle of the page. We have an interesting Gemara today, which harkens back to something we talked about earlier. Gemara says as follows. It's uh, looking at the widest set of lines, a countdown for Four line, four lines, and the line begins the word Bur Yonas Ayit Muchubai. There's two dots, there's a colon, and it says Aimer Echtavashiv. So the, the Gemara, as it often does, refers back to a quote in the Mishnah, as it always does, that's the order. The, refers back to a quote in the Mishnah and then comments. So the quote in the Mishnah is as follows Ha'imer, one who says, Echtai will sin, Va'ashav, and I will return, I'll do Teshuvah. Echtai will sin, Va'ashav, and I will return. And the Mishnah concludes, uh, this part is not quoted in the Gemara because the Gemara is not going to comment on it indirectly. Um, but the Gemara, conc- the Mishnah concludes, this quote con- concludes, in my speaking, he's not granted the opportunity by heaven to do Teshuvah because he's using Teshuvah as a means, as a reason to sin. I'll sin, I'll do Teshuvah, I'll sin, I'll do Teshuvah. So the Gemara comments, why is it required for the Mishnah to say, I'll return and sin, I will sin and return and do Teshuvah. Echtav Ashov, I will sin and return. Trezim it twice. Just say it once. One who says, I will sin and I will return, he doesn't get why twice. The point is made before. So says the Gemara Kedar Rav Huna. This is to support the notion of Rav Huna. And this Rav Huna we quoted earlier. Amar Rav, I'm sorry, Rav Huna, the name of Rav, which we quoted earlier. The Amar Rav Huna, Marav, or Rav Huna said the name of Rav, Kivan Sha'av or Adam Aveda, when a person does a sin, Vishan and then repeats the same sin, Vishan Abba and repeats the same sin, Hutrulai becomes permissible for him. Mar says, Hutrulai, it becomes permissible for him. It's still forbidden. is that what you mean? Allah rather Nasus Lakihater. He considers it as if it's permissible because he did it already twice. We explained this before the previous Gemara that a person um, repeats and does sin again and again. At one point, he looks at himself and say, This is who I am. I've given up on changing myself. Leave me alone. This is it. Yeah, this is who I am. Leave me, I'm not changing. person does it once. He says, oh, it was a mistake. I'll fix it. Uh, but he does it more than once. I will, uh, then he, yeah, that's who I am. It's fine. Leave me alone. I'm a good guy anyway. And that's it. And that's why the Gemara repeats Echtavash of twice to uh, hint or allude to that. Now, how does this relate? Okay, so that, that's a very nice statement. But what does it relate to the fact that the Mishnah says, one who says, I will sin and I will return, he doesn't grant the opportunity to do teshuva. Seemingly, considering the fact that we said that the reason why he's not granted the opportunity for doing, for doing teshuva is because teshuva itself is the cause of sin, then why is that related to the fact of some other scenario where a person gets comfortable with sin and makes, it, makes itself permissible? They seem to be unrelated points. So Rashi basically says that Havona actually means it to explain in the Mishnah that only once a person does this twice and therefore considers it as if it's okay, that's when Hashem says, I'm not going to grant you the opportunity for teshuva. A person who says, I will sin and I will do teshuva, maybe he's granted the opportunity to do, to do teshuva because it only happened once. And he's still not fully settled or complacent in that, teshuva, in that sin. Once he does it twice, now Hashem says, okay, you've gone complacent because you're relying on teshuva. No, no, not offering the opportunity for teshuva. This is the way Rashi learns the Gemara. We're going to learn the next piece of Gemara. And then I'm going to come back to this one and give a little bit more insight because I think the next Gemara is going to help us to understand it a bit, bit, bit deeper. Says the Gemara like this. Then the Gemara now quotes the next statement in the Mishnah, which reads, Echta will sin via makipurim machaper and yom kippur will atone. That's what a person says. I will sin and yom kippur is going to atone. Says the Gemara, says the Mishnah, and yom kippur and machaper, yom kippur does not sin. Does not, does not atone. Because the person says that Yom Kippur is going to atone. That's why it's not going to atone. Not that it's impossible to atone Yom Kippur. It just means Yom Kippur in the ordinary sense won't atone. We'll have to find a deeper teshuva. Because nothing stands in the way of teshuva as we know. But Yom Kippur, the ordinary process in which Yom Kippur atones is not available to him. Because Yom Kippur was the means for his sin, as the Gemara is going to explain. So the Gemara begins from a different angle and then comes to this conclusion. Namely, Lema, let us suggest that the Gemara must be that at this Mishnah, the Loike Rebbe does not follow the view of Rebbe, of Rebbe, Rebbe, the author of the Mishnah himself, or the compiler of the Mishnah, I should say. 
So perhaps this Mishnah doesn't follow his own personal view. Because we said earlier to Tanya, because we learned earlier in the Gemara, Rabbi Aymer, Rabbi says, for every sin of Torah, Bein Asat Shiva, whether he did Teshuvah, Bein Lasat Shiva, whether he didn't do Teshuvah. Yom Kippur Machapar, Yom Kippur atones. In Rabbi's view, Yom Kippur atones carte blanche. Doesn't matter what, what happened, did, didn't do. The person lived his way to Yom Kippur, cleansed and atoned. That's Rabbi's view. We've talked about this before. So if that's the case, then maybe the, our Mishnah does not follow Rabbi's view. Because our Mishnah says there are circumstances in which Yom Kippur doesn't atone when the person says that, Yom, that I'm relying on Yom Kippur. So perhaps, therefore, it doesn't follow the Rebbe's view, considering the Rebbe says Yom Kippur is a free pass. Says Gemara, no, a filo tamer Rebbe, we can still substantiate this statement even according to Rebbe, which means even in Rebbe's view, which says, that no matter whether the person did the shova or they didn't the shova, no matter what kind of sin it is, if the person lived his way through Yom Kippur, he is, he is atoned, or at least according to some views, if he observed Yom Kippur, he is atoned, even he will agree that someone who says, I'm sinning now because I know Yom Kippur is going to atone, even according to Rebbe, Yom Kippur won't atone. That would be the one exception. Why? Agav shiny. When he says, I'm relying on Yom Kippur, then Yom Kippur doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah. Hashem can. Uh, yeah, like Hashem could do whatever he wants. I'll be clear, obviously. Um, but what? Yeah, Hashem could do whatever he wants, so it could happen. But we're talking about just the general principle, general rule. Okay. Anyway, so oh, well, let's analyze the Gemara for a second. These two Gemaras. So when it comes to Yom Kippur, the Gemara is very explicit in saying that the reason why Yom Kippur doesn't help when a person says, I'm going to sin in the Teshuvah is because Yom Kippur was the impetus for a sin. But when it comes to, I will sin and I will do Teshuvah, the Gemara doesn't make that statement. And especially according to Rashi, he has to do it twice before, sin is, before Teshuvah is, is offered to him. But isn't the logic the same? Isn't the logic the same? In other words, the Gemara doesn't say, that if you twice rely on Yom Kippur, then Yom Kippur doesn't help. If you rely on Yom Kippur once, Yom Kippur doesn't help, period. But when it comes to Teshuvah, the person says, I will sin and I will do Teshuvah, then the Gemara says it only happens tw- only after twice. Why? The logic seemingly is the same. In fact, the Altarab actually does apply that logic to one who says, I will sin and do the, I, I will do Teshuvah. The context there is, the Altarab is proving that a person can do Teshuvah multiple times a day. What's the proof a person can do Teshuvah multiple times a day? First Manasseh. Three times a day we say in our, in our prayer, please give us Teshuvah and please grant, grant us forgiveness. And the Altarba says that we don't make a bracha in vain, right? If there's even a doubt that the bracha, that the, that the blessing is, is valid, we don't say it, right? If, if a person's not, let's say the, the person's doing a mitzvah, and the person's in doubt whether he's obligated to do the mitzvah, without getting into too many details. Uh, okay, you know, I'll give an example. The mitzvah we're wearing to fill in is by day. If a person, you meet someone on the street and it's after Shkia, it's after sunset, but before nightfall. That period between sunset and nightfall is a time of doubt. Is it part of day or is it part of night? So you want to put on film with this fellow, with this Jew. You, of course, put a film on in the morning, but you want to put on film with this, with this fellow Jew. So you could put on film with him because it might still be day, but you can't make a blessing because it's a doubt. It might still be night. And we don't make a blessing when there's a doubt issue. So if every single day you're making a blessing, please, God, bring me to Shuva. Three times a day you're saying this. And we're making a blessing. God, please forgive me. That means it's a certainty that if I do my tshuva correctly, Hashem is forgiving me three times a day. Which means between Shachas and Mincha, and three, the person sinned, and he's getting forgiveness at Mincha. And then between Mincha and Maira, the whole half hour or 20 minutes, he sinned again in theory, and Hashem is forgiving him at, Maira, at evening service. And then again from Maira, Maira to Shachas. Right? Which means a person could be, doing, could be sinning and doing tshuva multiple times a day. And getting forgiven for it, as we declare in Arshman Esri. So explains the Alter Rebbe, but seemingly this means that you're relying on Teshuva. Right? You're relying on the next prayer to forgive for Teshuva and forgiveness. And our Gemara said that a person who relies on Teshuva doesn't, is not granted the opportunities for Teshuva. So how does this jive? So explains the Alter Rebbe. When a person sins because he's a human being and he sins. Right? Okay. 
even if it happens multiple times a day, he does the shiva multiple times a day. When the, when the Gemara says, when the Mishnah says, that a person who sins and says, I'm sinning now because I want to do the shiva later, then the shiva doesn't help, that's only in a circumstance where during the moment of sin, he's actually thinking to myself, I could control myself, but I'm not controlling myself because I'm going to do the shiva later. Then the shiva is not off, the, grant, the opportunity for the shiva is not, off, not, not granted. But a person who just, as a human being, slips, not because he's relying on Teshuvah during the sin. Then Teshuvah right later that afternoon will help him. And then Teshuvah later that evening, and Teshuvah the next morning, etc. As, as, as long as the Teshuvah is not like the conscious impetus for why he's sinning. Yeah, right. so got principle, got oh, which means this principle that the Gemara here says about Yom Kippur. That the reason why Yom Kippur doesn't atone for one who says, I'm relying on Yom Kippur is because Yom Kippur itself was the impetus for sin. Then the same logic applies to Teshuvah. So why is it when it comes to, when it comes to the Shiva, the Gemara says twice? Why is it that where the Radashi explains it, that only after a person relies on the Shiva twice, that's when he's not offer, offered the opportunity for for sin. I mean that's when he's not offer, offered the opportunity for Teshuva. Why twice by Teshuva and, and once by Yim Kippur? Is the question clear? So perhaps it goes something like this. Suggested reading and the floor is open. Perhaps it goes something like this. Hashem doesn't, the opportunities for tshuva are, are withheld. Let's put it this way. What, what is tshuva? Right. Tshuva is the decision a person says, I'm no longer going to do this again. Right. That's, all the other things are like regret and uh, verbalization. Those are all the packagings of tshuva, which are necessary as part of the halacha. But the essence of tshuva is a decision a person makes never to sin. The return, sorry. The future. That's right. So regret is to it, the, the regret embellishes that decision to want to go further. The import, the verbalization has other values. They're all these are all other things. But the essence of the shiva is the definition of the mitzvah, especially as the Al-Tarab explains it. But this is true even according to the Rambam. The essence of the shiva is the decision that I'm not going to sin going forward. So now, what does it mean then? A person says, "I'm going to sin and I'll do the shiva." What's the person saying then? The person saying is like this. I'm, I'm going to give in now to the sin just because I, it's too much for me right now, but I'm never going to do it right after. This is the last time I'm doing it. That's basically what he's saying. That's what echtav asha means. The person says, I'm going to sin and do teshuva. What he's saying is, this is the last time I'm doing it. I'm going to give in now, but, when I'm, this, but this is the last time. You know, one more cigarette. You ever heard that, exp ever heard that expression? Yeah, one more drink. Yeah, one more drink and then I'm done. Right? So when a person makes that point, when a person does that, it, it's a problem, but has he truly given up on himself? Not really, because he's still saying this is the last one. He hasn't truly given up on himself yet. When a person says, I'm going to sin because Yom Kippur is going to atone, Yom Kippur is not happening now. Yom Kippur is happening in eight months from now, let's say, in theory, from today, from today it's even longer. All right. So at that point, he gave up on himself. He's saying, I'm not interested in changing. Yom Kippur is going to, change, going to, going to uh, atone. So once a person hits that point, not, Yom Kippur is not helping you. Yom Kippur only helps if you haven't given up on yourself. But when a person says, one more, and then I'll do Teshuvah, has he given up on himself yet? Not yet. And therefore he's going to be, he's offered the opportunity for to, to do Teshuvah. When he does it twice, now it's already indicative that you've given up on yourself. And there's the big problem. Sorry? And exactly. So the key here is not how many times the person relied on Teshuvah. The key here is Hashem is looking at you and asking you, have you given up on yourself yet? Because the point of Teshuvah is, that you climb out of your hole and you make a decision, I need to go forward. And therefore, only when a person gets to the point where, you know, I, I, I'm done, I'm over, leave me alone, then it requires a, a person to dig deeper, right? And, and oftentimes, it's an unfortunate reality, but oftentimes, uh, a person has to go through, uh, you know, it's an expressionism, but you know, there's something called reincarnation, right? And Kabbalah talks about reincarnation. Gilgul. Gilgul. The soul comes into the body, and why does the soul have to go through the, another body? Because it has more things it has to do, so it's got to come to another body. Particularly to cover all six different mitzvahs, different reasons. So some people, most people, go through multiple reincarnations throughout the span of history. And then there are some people, goes the line, who go through multiple reincarnations in one lifetime. 
<laughs> one lifetime. They end up in many different scenarios, and they have a you know it's like a deep clean, if you will. And uh, oftentimes, you know, it's heart goes out, but oftentimes the situation is where a person has to get mamish to a point where he he faces the wall and it says there's nowhere more to go. Now we can really do teshuva. Yeah, if the raw hit rock bottom. So it's it's possible that this is why the opportunities of teshuva are withheld. Because this is the only way he's going to crawl out. If Hashem kept on offering the opportunities for teshuva, he's going to keep on telling himself, I'm still okay, next time I'll fix it. So if he does it once, okay, so he slipped up. He slipped up, so Hashem's still going to provide him the opportunity for teshuva. But if it's gotten to the point where Nasalik had to, if it's gotten to the point where he's given up on himself, so Hashem providing him opportunities for teshuva is only just going to uh, add to the fact that he's giving up on himself. Because look, I still have more opportunities coming. Give, yeah, you just in, as 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 you know, you know, you know. I, when, when we learned the Gemara about Adam, remember we learned the Gemara about the, the Gemara says someone who's you know the Gemara in Sanhedrin. Call me she'ain like das, also the racham alav. Anyone who has no cognizance, it's a per, forbidden to have compassion on him. And we use the example of a, a sociopath or an addict, someone who's gone so far that uh, giving them more opportunities just, is just making it worse for them, not helping them, right? The Rebbe Hashab, the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, said, what a pity it is on these people that even Torah says you can't have a pity on them. Right? It's, it's gone so far that you can't even help the person. And you can't, it's, it's not going to help the person. It's going to make it worse when you try and help the person. You can help in a different way. Right? In a different way. You have to stand, but, but you have to stand back. You have to stand back. Even medical intervention, a lot of times, requires the person himself to realize that they need it. Of course. And before then, sometimes it backfires. So in this, and perhaps in this case, not God forbid that Hashem is, you know, the person gave up on himself because he says, I'm going to sin. Oh, next time I'll stop. Next time I'll stop. This is the last time I'm sinning. So he's given up on himself. And then someone reads the Gemara on the simple level. Hashem gave up on him also. I'm not granting him opportunity to do, to do, to do teshuva. God forbid. That's not how we should learn the Gemara. That Hashem, God forbid, gives up on a yid. Perhaps this is the only way to get to him. The only way to get to the Jew is if he comes to the point where he realizes on his own, there's nowhere more to go. I have to fix up. And until he got into that point, until he got into Nasa like a there, which is why when it comes to Yom Kippur, it's one time because you said Yom Kippur is going to atone for you. You've given up on yourself, so Yom Kippur doesn't work. You got to dig deeper. When it comes to someone who says, I will do Teshuvah later, I'm going to sit and do Teshuvah, Hashem is waiting for the point where you've truly come to the point where it's permissible for me. I've given up on myself. And then Hashem says, okay, I have to step back and wait for you to find your way because me granting you opportunities is only going to increase your sense that I'm okay. This is perhaps a little deeper way of understanding this very uh, challenging Gemara. Not challenging in the sense that it's difficult to understand, but challenging in the sense that it challenges us to face our own, our own uh, complacency. And my speaker, as I said, doesn't grant the opportunities. Teshuva is always available. Exactly. And even, even when it comes to Yom Kippur, it doesn't say that no Teshuva works. It says Yom Kippur doesn't atone. But you can do Teshuva still. And likewise, when it says that a person who says, I will sin, I will do teshuva, doesn't say teshuva doesn't work. It says God doesn't grant the opportunity to do teshuva, which means, but if you push, you can get in. And that's why I'm suggesting that maybe Hashem is waiting for you to do that push. And, and he's not granting opportunities because those opportunities are actually going to prevent you from doing teshuva. Not because he doesn't want your teshuva, but because those opportunities are going to prevent it because they further feed into the notion that I'm okay. Because look, I still have opportunities later. But when a person faces, you can't rely on anybody else. You gotta, you gotta clean up then a person can truly clean up. I'll just conclude with this. My grandfather used to say, my father, my mother's father, Mr. Tridal, used to say, uh, used to say, relate a story. I mean, this is an old story from Hasidim, but he used to say it a lot, that um, there's a competition amongst farmers who can have the cleanest chicken, the cleanest chicken, the whitest, purest chicken. And, uh, you know, chickens roll around in the mud. So there was one farmer who's nebach, his chicken is filthy, and he's sitting there wiping and cleaning and cleaning and wiping. And as, as he's wiping, one feather fall, plucks out, the other feather breaks, the chicken is squawking, it's uncomfortable, it's just the whole thing is just a mess. And as he's cleaning, it's making it worse, it's just not helping. And all of a sudden, the chicken gets fed up, and runs away from the, uh, from the owner, and gives it a shake, and like that, it's clean. You ever saw a chicken do that, that little chicken? 
So my grandfather used to say to these words, the whole world can help you and it backfires this way because you don't like the way this one's helping you and you're like, that one's helping you and this is hurting you and you don't like what he, I don't like the way he told me to, to fix myself. Forget all that. Give yourself your own shake and it's all, it's all cleansed. That's kind of what the Gemara is saying here. Hashem provides opportunities and Hashem provides opportunities. But if we squander them, the only thing that's going to help is if we give ourselves a shake. Yeah. Hashem's help. And we'll be able to... Uh, that's right. The moment... Oh, says, says the Mishnah, uh, the Medrash, uh, the Gemara. A person puts in a... Uh, person makes an opening the size of a needle, allowing Hashem in. I, and God says, I promise I'll open it up as wide as can be. So as soon as you show your initiative, Hashem holds your hand. But the initiative to begin with has got to come from you. All right, you have a wonderful day and a successful day.